uh, just con just continuous with with our sessions and what we're talking about. And today is um, we're just talking around the tackle choices and what what choices can we make when we're actually making tackles. Um, so just to begin with, what um, what choices are there that we can make when we actually start to look at the options of tackles? If you just if you just want to shout them out. Uh, choke tackle, uh, going low, uh, combo tackle, uh, squeeze ball, holding the person up, like trying to set up a mall. So if, if you want to just, um, so just let's, let's just talk through those. So what, what, what's a ch the first one I think you said was choke tackle. Yeah, choke tackle, uh, when you take someone a little bit high, higher and you aim for a man and ball to prevent offloads, maybe drive them back in contact um, if there's a size disparity sometimes. Yep. Okay. Uh, what, were, what were the other things that you said? Uh, when you go low, um, trying to get them down quicker. Again, if there's a size disparity, like a larger player or an angle tackle, or if you know I have support, so I can take a guy down low while my support can then go for the ball, like jackal. Or tackle, jackal, I guess. Yep, nice. What else do we have? A uh, combo tackle where you and support player will then go in together, like low and high, or try and hold the person up and you know, turn it into a mall, I guess. Yep, yeah, so we, we're, we're keeping the ball above the floor, right? Yes. Um, so similar to the choke tackle. Mm. Uh, and a couple others. Uh, uh, whether you're trying to drive the person back or accept the tackle, I guess, but that's more, I don't know if that's really a... Yeah, so I guess um, that would be known as more of a, this is a positive tackle. Okay, yeah. So if, if we're able to make the tackle and force the player back behind the gain line, um, then we've made a positive tackle. Whereas if we, we almost like soak, soak up the tackle it becomes a bit more of a negative tackle. Um, but obviously, two are, two are both effective. So we, obviously, we got, I mean, different types of tackles. We talked about a couple there. So uh, we got a front tackle, which would just be a traditional um, kind of players coming into you and you make the hit. We got a side tackle. So if there's an overlap, we talked about the curve last week in, in, um, in defense. If we're, if we're making that curve defense, we can actually make that tackle from the side. Um, if they've gone past us and we're looking at that ankle tap, uh, we, we talked about the choke tackle, which is just keeping the player up and keeping them um, as high up off the floor as possible. And then the chop tackle, which is pretty much like below the knees and just really trying to get that player to floor early so we can actually then uh, manipulate the jackal, like you said. Um, so if we, if we were to look at these each one of these and obviously you know the, just like anything in rugby the decision making is really important um what would be if we were to say what we're going to make a tackle now uh with each of these tackles what would be the main major key factors involved in in all of these tackles what's the first thing that you would do if you were coaching or playing and you were looking to make a tackle what's the first thing that you would do in order uh, to make one of these uh, get as close to the ball carrier as possible. Yeah. Right. So, we, so even before that, then even before that stage, what's the most important thing? Uh, visualizing where you're going to hit the person, like tackle height or target area. Yeah. So we we, we have to one identify who we're going to tackle, and then I think what you're saying there is we have to uh, we have to effectively then choose what type of tackle we're going to make. Right. Yeah. So once we choose what type of, type of tackle we can make. We then have to go into okay. Well, are we going to make a front tackle, a side tackle? Where are we going to hit them in terms of their body height? So, what what are some factors that will allow us to make those judgments? Uh, like, so let's take the front tackle to begin with. I'm standing opposite a player. They've got the ball. What? How is my body height going to change depending on what I see in front of me? How big they are. <laughs> I mean, relative to your size, uh, how far away they are, relative. Yep. What else? What else? This is good. This is good. Let's keep going. Uh, 
Oh, uh, how they how they're carrying the ball. How they're carrying the ball. How big they are. How far away they are. What else? Uh, I, mean, I would say if you can figure out what, like, if I mean, as a like a player. Like, if I know I'm going up against a fly half, then I know I'm probably going to deal with, you know, multiple options for what he's going to do with the ball. Like, kicking is a thing, or passing, or, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's it's tough though, right? So the, mm. the picture in front of us is like, well, we've got to make all these decisions, and we've got to make them pretty much instantly. So, okay, we've identified our target. Let's say it's a fly half. Let's use your example. It's a fly half. Uh, we've taken the space away. What kind of tackle do we want? They're, are they good at offloading? Are they not good at offloading? Are they <coughs> someone who maybe pick the ball? Are they going to pass the ball? Like, what what is it that we're going to do to actually make this tackle effective? Um, and I think we so we we talked earlier in 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 the sessions around um, when we've got the ball in hand, we've got to make two decisions, and we've got to make those decisions early. So it's either we can either pass the ball or we can run hard with the ball. And what we can't do is kind of like have an in-between mindset of, well, I'm not sure if I should run, I'm not sure if I should pass, so I'm going to do both because one of them is going to fail. Um, and one of the things that I, I see more and more often is that players are hesitant around what types of tackle they should make. And often the best tacklers from eight years old all the way through to the elite levels of the game are players who commit to the tackle. So we, we can talk about all the key factors around the technique of the tackle and you know the technical side of what they need to do. But the reality is we just need to be able to take the space away from the player that we're tackling and actually make the tackle. Does that make sense? Yeah. That commitment piece? Um, yep. And so obviously that's that's the end piece, and it would be, it would be like a boxer almost going into a ring, and hesitating whether they should punch the, uh, the the opposition or not, right? And that's I think that's what a lot of the time you see is like it's like oh should I hit I don't know, so then what happens is because of that hesitation, body height changes, hands come up, um, all different things happen instead of the tackle actually being made. Whereas if we have a really decisive boxer, they throw punches, they know exactly what they're going to do. And they actually punch through the player, and that's how the tackle should be as well. So, if we're looking at these um, these front tackle, the side tackle, the choke tackle, the chop tackle, what we're looking for is the point of contact to be one to the defense. <coughs> point of contact. If we look at it through through my hands right now, if this is the defender and the defender is coming through, what we want to do is we want to win that first three inches of contact. And that might sound a little bit funny, three inches. But all we're looking to do is if we win that first three inches of contact, we're going to win the contact area. Or we're more, a lot more likely to win the contact area. So that initial hit has to push our player back. As soon as we push our players back, we've won the contact area, we have an opportunity to take the player to floor. So if you imagine the contact areas like that, so that's three inches, already gravity and physics is on your side as the tackler. Whereas if the ball carrier wins the contact area, they're probably going to bump that player off. But all it comes down to is within that three inches. So three inches either side of this contact line, that's what we want to try and work on and beat. Um, and I think a lot of the time when we look at players and how they tackle, their technique isn't right because they're not coming through and winning that first three inches. Um, so... I just want to ask a couple of questions around your experiences around the contact area. Like, do, is that something that you guys see regularly? Is that sometimes that, that what you have done or maybe what you've coached? Uh, I do, well, as a player and a coach, like it is definitely attempting to win the contact area. Uh, I'm old enough, like when I first started learning, like it, we were taught the chop tackle. I go low on a guy, just bring him down. But like as the game has progressed, it's more, I guess, rugby league style, where they're really looking for those more positive tackles, like try and meet them or prevent them from making that game line. You know, and on offense, I coach to like we're trying to get past that game line. So yeah. it really is that. Yeah. Uh, like, and so, so what, what, 
what about the contact area itself, like that initial connection of two bodies? Do, do have we ever heard that three inches kind of rule? Like if we can move that player three inches one way or another way, we're probably going to win that contact area. Um, I've never heard the three inches rule, but I have heard like uh, even ex football players, like you don't aim necessarily for the person or to stop them where they are. You aim to stop them behind where they are. So I'm aiming for that point behind them, you know, but I've never really considered it in terms of like three inches, you know, it's, but it's always like trying to drive them back. like try and control the tackle. Yeah, and I think, I think so that's interesting, right? So, we, we, again, if we look at the boxer, we're looking for the boxer to punch through um, through, through the, the points of contact, right? So um, if we just had a boxer who just punched and stopped here, the punch would be ineffective. So what we're looking to do is actually punch through the player. Um, and that's kind of what we're looking for with the tackle as well. But that, that three inches is going sh- to throw off the center of gravity of the player. So the, the tackle itself... I think we get into um, kind of get into our um, a, a mindset of we need to make these huge tackles, uh, and the reality is we don't have to make huge tackles. We just have to make a big impact when we first make that contact and win the first three inches. If we can make the first three, inches, complete control and manipulation over the other player. And so, whether that's the front tackle, the side tackle, uh, the choke tackle, or the chop, if we just hit and slide down we're going to be ineffective. If we can hit win that first three inches, we actually have control of that other player. And that's what we want to do. Similarly, in attack, if we come in the other way and we um, win that first three inches in attack, we're there in, in control of the contact area, which allows us then to be successful moving forward. So I'm going to give you just a couple of um, key points now, which uh, I, I teach a lot of the time within coaching the tackle. So if we were to look at any kind of player coaching that, uh, who's learning how to tackle. A lot of the time you'll probably hear the um, arms around, okay, grab the wrists, pull in and squeeze, cheek to cheek, all those kind of things. Does that sound familiar? Yep. Yep. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at these and maybe change it up a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is our punch. And what I mean by that is similar to what we've just been talking about is we need to punch through the player. Um, not physically punch the player, but we need to throw our hands. We, our hands are going to be nice and close together. Our hands are going to be punching through and towards the player. So our hands will go either side of either the hips, the knees, um, or the chest, wherever it is that we're tackling. And we have to punch through with both hands. What that is going to do is it's going to allow us to actually use our body and our weight as a momentum to actually get through the player. So that first three inches is going to be really beneficial. So as we punch through, we come through it and the player gets moved back because our feet in the right position, our hand placements in the right position in terms of our punch, and then our body is actually coming through as well. Once we've punched, we're going to use something called glue, which is, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Glue is sticky, right? So what we're looking to do is grab hold of the player probably on the, on the back of the jersey or the back of the shorts. And that glue is a really strong grip and that doesn't come off. So if that player punches and they get their glue and then the player continues to run, th- or the attacker continues to run through and you're on the floor, you've still got your glue so you can still keep hold of that player and then somebody else can come and tackle. So that glue is vital, that grip strength is vital. So we've got our punch, we've got got our glue that play is not going to go anywhere our search is then we need to search the body for another contact point which is weak and so when we watch like mma fighting um a lot of the time what you'll see is that the play uh, the, the the fighters are able to manipulate the body of the other player uh, of the other fighter and able to drop them to the floor so what we're looking to do is once we punch we've got our glue we're searching for something which is weak so it could be for example the back of the knee the back of the knee will only bend in one way. And when we're able to bend that knee one way, we're able to pick up that leg and that stops their drive, which allows us to then drive forward. We are then able to drive forward and drop the players to the floor. As we land on top of them, what's the most crucial thing we do once that pack tackle has been made? Release, roll away. We have to roll away, right? How, how many times have you seen penalties being given 
or being given penalties to when you've tried to roll away and you haven't been able to because your arm is stuck somewhere because the player's lying on top of it. Does that happen? Yep. Yeah, he used to play flanker. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah, so probably a lot then. So what we'll, we'll do is when we, when we get into a position where we've made a tackle, there'll always be one elbow or one arm which is free, and we've got one which is lying under a player. What we want to do is we want to roll that elbow. So let's say it's my left elbow. What we're looking to do is roll that elbow out and expose our body and open our chest up to roll away from the contact area itself. So it's effectively, we're punching through, we're gluing on, we're grabbing something one of, the, of, of what one of the opposition has, the attacker has. We're then searching for something else to actually manipulate the body, to put the body on the floor. We're driving through and down into the player. Uh, and sorry, into the floor, and then we're moving that elbow to completely roll away, to then give the uh, the rook opportunity space, and therefore the referee can't actually uh, penalise you. Do we do we follow that? Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So, when when we're looking at these uh, tackle types of tackles, um, do these key factors? apply to all of these types of tackles? Uh, besides the ankle tap. Yeah, right. Apart from the ankle tap, like obviously that's just yeah. a tap, but it's still, a, it's still, when you think about the ankle tap, it's still a three inch little thing, yeah. right? So when we're doing that front tackle, it's really easy to see. We punch through, we grab the glue, we, we, we move it. But even on the side tackles, right, what we need to get punched through the players so therefore, we're able to actually manipulate the defender, uh, the attacker. On the choke tackles, uh, when we've got two players coming in, we make that punch first. We, we knock the player backwards to touch, and then we keep them up so we're in control. So that glue is always there. So the player's trying to drop to the floor, and they can't because you've got the glue and you've got them held up. And then what about the chop tackle? What's, what's useful with the chop tackle then? Because obviously, we're not holding the player. We want to get them to floor as fast as possible. What's it really vital we do when we chop? Get back to your feet as quickly as possible. Back to your feet. And if we can't do that, we have to roll away, right? So we have to use yeah. that. And so for me, it's, it's, it's a really <coughs> interesting thing. How, when we're coaching or when we're playing, are we able to coach decision-making around what tackle we're going to be making here? So a lot of the time, we'll probably just work on the front-on tackle. And we'll probably get two players to run at each other and say, right, you tackle him or her. And we'll hope for the best. How often do we actually coach these other tackles or practice them if we're playing ourselves? Uh, side on a fair bit. Never really ankle taps. Um, the choke, honestly, with the COVID restrictions, like we try, uh, I'm trying to follow the... Um, can't remember whose guidelines, but like the, we minimize the face-to-face, -face, like the up top yeah. tackle. So we use the chop a lot, just because mm -hmm. you can still work your tackle form and everything. But the choke is very effective. Like uh, I play and I coach a men's team and a women's team. So, well, I, yeah. So the chop, the choke rather is especially effective for like holding up and like maintaining possession of the ball. But, and so what, What's, uh, it's something that we haven't talked about here, but what's really important with all these types of tackles in terms of, let's say we've got everything perfect. We've got a decision-making right. Uh, we've got our, we know exactly what type of tackle we're going to make. Um, uh, we've, we've got our sequence, our punch, our glue, our search, our drive, our elbow. Um, but what's, what's the one important thing that we've actually missed out here? It's very similar to the passing. It's very similar to if we're boxing, um, what, what is it? No, we need to support not reboxing. <laughs> it's something that I don't think is taught much at all when when teaching the tackle or practicing the tackle. So what 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 are um what are boxers renowned for? How do they train? 
apart from the obvious sparring. punch and, and sparring, what what do they do a lot of? So they'll, they'll spar, they'll hit punch bags. Mm -hmm. What's what's one of the kind of? If they're very good at it, they probably think right, you're a boxer. Work. So like jump rope, right? I, I, I said work, but yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, just, I thought you said work. <laughs> um, yeah, their footwork is excellent, right? So, yeah. one of the things that we need to be able to teach more than anything is being able to get your footwork in the right place, and it's probably a very underrated um, skill set in terms of how it's taught and how often we we actually put the time into it. Because if we're able to get our feet into the right position all these other things kind of will just flow into motion. Whereas if we're trying to punch somebody and while feet's not in the right position, where, where do we end up? Probably like a squared up. Yeah. Yeah. Squared up, get knocked over. They'll, they'll win those first three inches. Yeah. Um, so look, really, um, really quite a quick session today. But big, big emphasis around uh, when we're looking at, how we're actually teaching the tackle or um, we're actually working towards developing our tackle. It's really important to get our feet in the right position. It's really important that we, we view the picture in front of us, whether we're going to actually make a front tackle, a side tackle, an ankle tap, whatever type of tackle it is. But then we've got to go through the sequence of the key factors around punching, keeping our body nice and compact and square. But as we punch through, we're looking for that glue so we don't let go of that player. We're searching for another body part so we can manipulate and actually put the player down to the floor. We're driving through the tackle itself, so like we talked about with the footballers, tackling past the player. And then once we're on the floor, we're trying to get our free elbow, not the one under the player, to the floor as quickly as possible so we can show the referee that we're actually away from the rook and we're trying to get it out. Does, does that help? Yes. Okay, so what... What I'll try and do as well is I'll try and get a video of um, the punch, glue, search, drive, and elbow uh, sent out to you guys as well, so we can actually see it in action versus just talk about it in theory. Does that help? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank thank you guys. Nice and short this week. Yeah. Um, and I'll I'll see you guys next next week. Right. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you. Okay.